Hello, Yi Zhao Martins, licensed marriage family therapist, couples therapist. So when I was 16, first one day I was on my way home, riding a bicycle, uh, crossing this bridge in the rush hour traffic um, in Beijing. And my first love boyfriend was next to me riding a bicycle as well. I turned to him and asked him, who am I? Why am I here? He joined me with his big eyes, uh, this slightly dark, bluish tone of my emotions without answering. And we just stare at the crowd and this bridge called the Bright Future Bridge um, and the sunset and feeling very connected in this loneliness. For the, after that 20 years, I was trying to figure out the same two questions and working really hard. Um, and I noticed as a professional nowadays, um, as a couple therapist, a mediator, um, and unification therapist, a lot of times my clients ask me the same question, even in a very different way, consciously or unconsciously. Um, uh, for example, my premarital counseling clients, I know what they are trying to get uh, when they come to me for premarital counseling. Is oftentimes this underneath the anxiety and tension. They want me to tell them that they are okay as a couple. They, or they will be just fine. Um, all they do going through this premarital counseling process is like um, something you go through, uh, like a protocol, like getting a marriage license, that they want me to reassure them and they will get along, they will be okay to deal with each other's difficulties and live happily thereafter. Well, my answer is, honestly, I do not know. I do not know if the two of you will be okay. The two of you will survive many fights down the road. The two of you actually will be still together by the end. But I do know if you are willing to be committed to a lifetime of learning and growing together and willing to accept each of your differences neurologically, physically, culturally, um, gender-wise, emotionally, and that you are dedicated to work hard to integrate those differences, um, you will be just fine. And I keep telling my couple's clients to come back to yourself in the moment of conflict. For example, when you are feeling this vulnerable heart rupture and broken, when your partner cannot attune to you perfectly in the way you want in that moment and creates a lot of discomfort and pain, what do you do? What is your natural tendency? Do you A, withdraw, just back off from everything and shut your partner out? Do you be vent? Um, do not choose any words that's appropriate or kind. Let everything just come out and your frustration, you hurt feeling, you let them feel the way you feel. Do you see demand exactly the way you want to be met your needs and right now? Or do you step back and take some time to look at yourself? Notice what's going on inside of your body and your head and your, your emotions. And notice those vulnerable parts that's present, having strong emotions. And get to know them, to listen to them, cuddle them, maybe journal, maybe take a walk. Maybe take a bath, anything that you can do to let yourself come back. And once you are friendly with yourself, that you come with, come to your partner to repair with a clear intention and words express yourself and with a faith that they will see you, accept you, love you, and honor you for who you are. Sounds pretty dreamy. I know I have been a little bit philosophical and poetic today. 
So, and you're probably used to my concrete bulletins, points one, two, three, and here they come. So how do you come back to yourself? Six things I want to talk about. The first one is to have a bodily practice. It can be yoga, qigong, tai chi, any kind of martial art practice, body movement practice, breathing practice, like yogic pranayama practice, um, any kind of sports, dances, but not with a focus to perform or to build muscle tones or to lose weight, but to get connected with your body and increase your bodily awareness. Why is that important? It comes in handy when you connect with your body that you sense what's going on with your body to tell you what kind of emotions are emerging for you. So you can pause and take a break to connect with yourself before you express what's really happening inside of you. So that's a basic step. Everybody has it. Babies do. But somehow, when we grow up, going through life, we harden ourselves and we forget how we feel in our body. Number two is practicing self-regulation. What does self-regulation mean? It means this conscious effort coming from you to down-regulate or up-regulate your nervous system. What does it look like? See, if you are very agitated and anxious, one way of self-regulation will be go take a walk or have a cup of hot tea because you will be blowing in the tea, the water, and you exhale longer and it soothes your nervous system. It switch on your parasympathetic nervous system and that makes you feel a sense of easy and relaxation. Or sometimes you maybe need up your regulation. Say if you come in, uh, wake up in a winter winter day and morning feeling sluggish and not very uh, motivated and cranky, then maybe what you need is some pranayama, breath of fire, kapalabhati, to help you to bring up your vibration and your energy level. Number three is to build resources for other regulation. I actually have a Google sheet for that, including massages, facial, hair care, skin care, body care. Um, it could come in from other people to give regulation to you. You can also, through touch, go into petting zoos. There's a Tilden Little Farm that's great for that in Berkeley. Um, in San Francisco, there's a kind of kitty time uh, cafe where you can actually cuddle with kitties to help you to regulate. Number four, practice co-regulation with your partner or with a friend or a colleague. It could be having a meal together, drinking tea together, talking and listening to each other take turns. You can take a walk together and listen to music, dance, cuddle, mutual massage, trade massages. Those are co-regulation. Our human beings, just like we're animals, and we need that co-regulation to stay healthy and strong. Number five is continue to develop your capacity to identify, to notice, to verbalize, to express your thoughts, your feelings, your needs, your desires. I know the difference among the four. I know this is a little bit higher up there. We'll talk more later. It takes more cultivation to do those. It's not as easy as it sounds. So use some resources. It could be listening to a podcast, to an audio book, read a real book reading lot blogs online, listen to YouTube, and attend a workshop, and find a therapist or coach, and be in couple therapy with your partner to develop those skills. Those are essential skills for this century 
to be able to connect with others and to understand each other. So the last one、um, is knowing when it's your part that's speaking instead of your true self. So the concept of parts. Um, we're mentioning many modalities. For example, internal family system, drama therapy, gestalt therapy.、Um, so those are just the techniques and to help us to understand.、Um, my understanding of a part is a psychic state that each of you all have. We all have that's developed during a time when there's intense life events happening, and when we're young, we're mom adaptive. So this part is developed to protect, to aid, to help, but in a very immature, sometimes not very effective way. But it's still part of us. So we wanted to get to know them and love them, and let them relax. So the adult self can be present and solve the problem and deal with the crisis and express ourselves and take care of ourselves. So the last two. Are more advanced, and so it's harder to do on your own. And if you ever need support, consultation,、um, coaching, you can reach out to a professional therapist, coach, couples counselor to help you to develop the skills. So I de- develop, help develop all of those skills in my therapy and practice with my clients, especially couples clients. We focus on the first. Four in the first stage of our work, until the couple have a very safe container to be able to identify the dances to do together. Then we get into practice the skills to verbalize their needs and feelings and emotions and desires, and go to the stage three to do some parts work to heal past trauma. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you have some of those. Self-care practices and co-regulation skills. If you have any question, comment down below and let me know. And let me know your parts. Till next time.